Hi, it's Chef and Builder Janie Pendleton. We're back in the kitchen where today I'm going to teach you how to collect and how to preserve persimmons. Um, we're about November the 3rd, November the 4th. And um, what I've done here is we've shaked the sugar tree. <laughs> That's what we're going to call it, shaking the sugar tree. A persimmon, and these are... Um, these are the wild-grown persimmons that you see along the tree lines here along the Midwest and down all down through Georgia. And uh, now if you get the big persimmons, those are a Japanese persimmon. They're sweet and they're good, but they're not as sweet as these. And you've got to go out and put down a tarp, shake the tree really hard, and, or even maybe climb up on the bed of your truck and put a ladder in the bed of your truck like we did and then climb up. Matter of fact, I'll put that picture right here. Okay, we're back. That's a picture of John climbing on the back of the truck, shaking the tree, and I was going around collecting them. So we found three persimmon trees on the property that we're trying to buy. And uh, you want to make sure that um, it's even better off with these really astringent ones. They can have almost like a, um, oh my gosh, it's almost like a, a numbing powder sensation on your mouth. Uh, like a cotton, like a numbing cotton sensation on your mouth if you eat one of these and it's not ripe yet. So trust me, they need to be so ripe. Well, here's one. They're so ripe that they're literally falling apart and the seeds are just coming right off. And right here's what one of the seeds looks like. They can be dark or they can be light, it's fine. And you get quite a few seeds, if you can see here. You get quite a few seeds. Now, if you take these seeds, rinse them really well, Okay, fill it with room temperature water, drop the seeds in, sit this aside, like maybe like a little towel or like a little piece of plastic with some holes popped in it. Put a rubber band on top of that. I usually use a canning jar. I just wanted to show you if I have lipstick on this. But anyway, you can see the seeds in here and you'll let this ferment for about, oh, say maybe three or four days and then you can peel. You can peel the uh, outer skin off of this, that gooey stuff you see on there now, this, this persimmon pulp stuff. You get that out of there and then you dry the seed. You can spread them out even on paper towel. And then you uh, air dry them for maybe three or four or five days and then be sure and put them in paper. And then you can plant them next spring and you can grow persimmon trees that way, okay? So that's how you preserve the seeds of the persimmon. These are the ones, you're going to get some that are no good. So I keep a bag right here next to me for the ones that are no good. And for the little tops here. These tops have a name and I, for the life of me, I can't think of the name of them. Now here you're going to see some that are a little bit black. Alright, just pop the little tops off, the little hats off of them. Open them up and if they look really dry and not mushy, I'm not going to use those. Okay, that's a little mushy, that's a little better. So I'm just gonna peel off some of that black. Remember, you're not gonna be using the skin. And it takes quite a few persimmons to get two cups. And most recipes call for two cups of persimmon pulp. For most persimmon puddings, it calls for two cups of pulp. All right, now it's going to take about a half of a gallon, so for a cup. So it'll probably take about a gallon of these for two cups. Okay, and if you see, here, I have a bunch of them, okay? And what we did is we just broke them right off the branch. They were hanging like in, like, like almost like grapes off the branch. And we just broke off the branch, set it in the back of the truck, it rained on them, the sun came on them, and they actually finished ripening in the back of our pickup truck. All right, that's how we did it. And you can see here that the skins are just peeling right off. This is what you want. If there's some of them are a little bit black, that's fine. That's, that's perfectly normal for the wild ones. Because I'll show you this. I just want to wash off any bird droppings or anything that might be on them. So anyway, let me open up a black one, just the skin here. And let me show you inside. See, it's not black. That's perfectly fine. Rinse that off, okay? Now, there's really not much more to it than this, other than I'm going to save a few of the seeds of some of the more bigger, riper ones. You want to choose some really nice big ripe ones for seeding them. You want to make sure you do this at room temperature. So to make sure it doesn't have that wild per, uh, 
astringent wild persimmon flavor that really numbs your tongue almost it's like it's like eating a cotton ball a sweet cotton ball um then you want to make sure that the skins are falling off and yes you can ripen these on the branch on the twig just break off the twig and they'll grow themselves back next year they're they're really good about that yeah so we have my husband cleaned all that up he picked them all off the branches when he thought they were ready but we picked them when some of them were almost ripe and then most of them were not ripe and we just decided, just in case we didn't get back up on that property again to pick them, we'd go ahead and pick them, and we did. And I'm certainly glad that we did. And again, I'm going to save the seeds out of some of these bigger ones. That means I'll have a nice, nice healthy tree. So if any of you guys would like a persimmon tree, or some persimmon seeds from this persimmon tree, let me know and I'll uh, see if I can't send you some. Now, oh, I know what I wanted to tell you about persimmons. Persimmons have 35% sugar in them, which means they're one of, one of, or if not the highest natural fruit sugar. Of, and they're actually, by the way, not a fruit. They are considered a berry, a tree berry. My, uh, my dad taught me that. He'd be proud of me to know that I even remembered it. But if they feel, if they don't feel mushy or feel like the skin's about ready to slide off, then they're not ready. They must look like they're basically rotting off the vine, and that's when they are at their best. Again, so as long as they don't have any splits, any bird poop on them, just rinse them really well with nice clean water. Look at, oh, look at this one. See this one right here, I'm barely touching it, and the, and, the, and the skin comes right off. That's what we're talking about right there. That's exactly what we want. It looks like I'm not going to have any problem at all getting two cups worth, which is exactly what we're going to need. Because these are mostly seeds. There's a lot of seeds in here. Okay, so we're just going to keep on going. If you have any questions, right now is a good time to ask them below. Yeah, these right here, like I said, your, your Japanese versions are much bigger and they don't really have much seeds in them. You might find like maybe one or two seeds per gallon. And it takes about five or six of the Japanese style persimmons. But persimmons, I mean, even these came over, I believe, from uh, these original seeds back way, way back when the uh, Quakers and then came to America. They brought some of these seeds with them because they were so high in the fruit sugars and stuff. They were just one of these. One of these that's not ripe yet can spoil the entire um, the, the entire batch. So, so even before I mush them, I'm going to double check and make sure that that's what I want to do. They should feel like rotten grapes on the inside just to give you an idea. So we will see you back here in just a little while, okay? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to set a pot in here that will hold about eight cups, a uh, minimum eight cups. And so that this does not sink down in there, I'm just going to do just like I do for my chicken stock. I'm just going to set it just like that right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start mashing. Now you can do smaller amounts or big amounts. It doesn't matter. Look at that. It mashed up, it doesn't matter, it'll go through. If you want, you can wear rubber gloves. You're gonna get messy. That's just how it is with that. See, you're making pulp. You're making pulp. This is gonna take a while. Like I said, you can do this in smaller amounts. But you've gotta get this to go through the sieve. And it is a thick, sticky thing. You cannot put this through your um, your KitchenAid food processor because the seeds are too big and they'll, they'll plug up that cone. Okay? It's a coming out, so... Don't use your best towels either. They'll stain your towels. All right? So I'm going to mush this all through. And when I get done and I have this beautiful pulp here, like you see here, we will be back in a minute. Push it through a little bit finer sieve. Here we have what's left over of the seeds and what's attached to the seeds that I couldn't get out. 
this stuff is so sticky and then here we have the clean water I just put it in a vase here let me tip up my camera here for you uh, we have the clean water and then right in here we have all the seeds in here I already did a few and you can see my hands are a little wet so I don't want to touch them but you can see here what the seed looks like when it is dried a few darker seeds in there the darker seeds might not grow anything but the nice plump seeds like these will and these right here are ready to plant for next spring you want to put them in a paper package all right and keep them in a cool dark place just like you would any kind of seed and then what we're going to do then is we're going to plant some next year now the nice thing about persimmons are they're very high in sugar and they're great in smoothies they're they're high in fruit sugar so that's why a lot of animals eat them like squirrels and raccoons and possums they love these they're, can they're nature's candy to them you can dehydrate some of these and you can uh, you can dry you know dehydrate the pulp and make a persimmon pulp uh, like a fruit leather with it um, you can dehydrate it and reconstitute it and use it into other you know other goods milkshakes pies cookies persimmon cookies there's all kinds of things that you can do with this and I've only just begun this is just my first eight cups my kids love this stuff so remember to save some seeds and you know what I think I'll give some seeds away too in some of seed packets in some of our uh, giveaways this year I think that will be fun I think I think a seed sharing um, uh, uh, seed sharing of organic seeds would be a really good idea anyway this is the pulp this is what it looks like and um, and we hope you come back for another episode of uh, Janie in the kitchen all right blessings be sure and subscribe. Be sure and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure and let us know how we're doing. Blessings.